could we actually build the Halo ring world today? Well, the short answer is no. But the longer answer is, we already designed one back in the 70s. There are a variety of macro engineering challenges that we as the human race would need to overcome to achieve such a feat. Everything ranging from advanced material science to astro construction to even how on earth, or should I say in space, we would get there. Let's dive into today's mission, to build humanity's new home among the stars, a ring world. Now, before we outline our plan, we need to clarify just how big, or rather small, we will be building our ring world. The original ring world concept, outlined in the 1970 book by Larry Niven, describes a rotating wheel space station, also known as a Von Braun wheel. Yes, that same Von Braun featured in our rocket ship video that has colossal proportions. Niven's ring world had a diameter roughly the same size as the Earth's orbit around the sun. Now, this type of ring world, literally a world in itself, is truly an extraterrestrial megastructure, and to build it would require more matter than what's available in our solar system. So, I think it's safe to say that's a bit outside the scope of what us little humans can accomplish at the moment. Let's try talking about something much smaller and more feasible, the halo-sized ring world. While the diameter of Niven's ring world is close to the diameter of Earth's orbit of 300 million kilometers, the 10,000 kilometer diameter of Halo from the game with the same name is much closer to the diameter of Earth itself, which is 12,756 kilometers. This gives the ring a circumference of almost 31,500 kilometers, about 10,000 kilometers less than the Earth, which is still undeniably huge. One of the first major challenges for building a Halo ring world involves material science. Everything from buildings to railways to the phone you are probably watching this video on required new chemical or material solutions in order to be built and remain durable, and the same are required for the Halo ring. The issue is, we simply don't have them yet. It needs to be simultaneously strong, light, and also easy to mass produce something that might be possible with carbon nanotube material, but this is still decades away. Or perhaps we might find the answer in a curious physical phenomenon called the piezoelectric effect. This effect causes certain materials to expand when you run electricity through them, which in turn could help increase the structural integrity of the halo. More power, more strength. Which does lead us to our second point, power generation. The vast space station would not only need electricity to maintain its structure, but also to power its rotation. These ring worlds use rotation to generate artificial gravity through centripetal force, kind of like having a bucket of water on the end of a rope and swinging it around you. As long as you swing it fast enough, the water stays in the bucket, just like our boots would stay on the ground on the space station. The issue is just how fast they would need to rotate. To get even close to Mars gravity, which is only around one-third of the Earth's at 3.7 meters per second squared, our ring station would need to rotate at least half a revolution per hour. At the size we have outlined, that would be roughly 15,000 kilometers per hour at the halo surface, or almost 12 times faster than the Earth's rotation. So naturally, I gotta go fast. This would also mean, without some sort of roof, the atmosphere of this world would easily slip away, and if you didn't get the balance exactly right, the whole ring could shake itself to pieces. Okay, so what if we made this halo ring smaller, with today's materials and a roof to keep in the atmosphere? Well, we don't have to think hypothetically here, because it's already been designed over 50 years ago, the Rotating Wheel Space Station. In the 1950s, Werner von Braun and Willy Ley, writing in Collier's magazine, postulated that a spinning wheel space station would be needed as a way to stage spacecraft headed for Mars. They envisioned a rotating wheel with a diameter of 76 meters, or 250 feet. It was designed to accommodate a crew of 80 people. The three-deck wheel would revolve at three revolutions per minute to provide artificial one-third gravity. But in the 70s, a plan was introduced that would kick it up a notch. 
In 1975, NASA proposed a space station called the Stanford Taurus, a giant space wheel that would have a city of 10,000 or even up to 140,000 people living inside. It consisted of a Taurus ring, hence the name, that is 1.8 kilometers in diameter, or having a circumference of 5.6 kilometers, about three and a half miles. To have artificial gravity at 90% of Earth's gravity, it would rotate once per minute. Compared to our halo-sized ring, this would be 46 times slower at the surface. At the center of the structure would be a hub attached by spokes going to the ring that would serve as the zero-g section and the main dock for the station. But what would it be like to live on it? At these rotational speeds, the sunlight coming through the windows would hardly be at normal intervals. Therefore, a large mirror nearby would shine the light inwards for 12 hours and then rotate away for 12 hours, simulating day and night. The original report suggested that the interior space of the Taurus would be split into terraced housing along the walls and farmland and natural environment along the trough of the curve. If you stood in the middle, it would look like a sweeping U-shaped valley curving upwards at each end, with a clear roof overhead keeping in the atmosphere. For the size of this structure, everyone would have their own small home of around one to two bedrooms in size. Lastly, how would we build it? Surprisingly, the level of technological progress required is already available today. What it comes down to is logistics. NASA originally planned to mine the moon for materials, shooting ore out to a catcher platform in orbit before it could be shuttled to the industrial facilities building the Taurus. Other materials or hard to build components would be shipped from the Earth. But what about the bigger halo, or God forbid, the ring worlds of science fiction? For all their epic grandeur, ring worlds are scientifically unfeasible and grossly inefficient examples of stellar engineering. They are a solution in search of a problem. Science fiction author and former research astronomer Alistair Reynolds. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.